Welcome one, welcome all to this most famous of racing Saturdays. Dave Orson with you for the next hour or so, talking all things Aintree, all things Grand National. Welcome along to the Morning Post, of course, at Racing Post headquarters and sponsored by William Hill. Oh, we're going to give you some pearls today. Don't forget, this is your chance to have a shout out this morning. It's an interactive show. Thumbs up if you're watching YouTube. That's all you've got to do. Press that icon. Up comes the chat. There's a big community out there. Great to have you with us. We've got a real stellar lineup. I can assure you of that. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. It's that simple. Get involved on Twitter. Right, all things ain't tree today. That's what it's all about. Let's introduce you uh, to the wise men that I have with me uh, sitting to my right is Tom Siegel. Morning, David. How we are, you? are We are churning you out this week as usual. Yeah, lots of work this week. Lots of work. You've obviously, we'll get to your tips that were in, uh, well, it was 6 p.m. last night or whatever, and we wheeled you out on another show and all that sort of stuff. Uh, have you have you looked at the market and still happy with everything? Nothing's changed your mind? Oh, well, they're obviously a bit shorter than I want them now, but, uh, you know, you, you do what you can do and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, one in the first, way too short now, really, isn't she, West Balboa? But, you know, they still, still think she'll probably win. That's what we want. Big opinions. Charlie Post, a winning nap for you before West Balboa, I seem to remember, which is quite rare on this show. Uh, and uh, that was at Aintree as well. And, and you are, again, pro her. Very much so, yeah. Are you a winning map for me or just in general on the show? Well, I think I think well, you can take it how you want. <laughs> I mean, so there is only <laughs> there the is definitely thing, one yeah. person with a with a with a worse run of winning naps than me. And, and he's sitting you. next to you. Hang <laughs> on, <laughs> 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 it's Paul Keeley. You're probably not wrong, are you? No, I, I think uh, me and you are nearly on, probably, on that run. I got a tweet from a guy yesterday. You know, five consecutive losers on your plateau. I'm never backing her again. You're useless. Right, you know, and they're not popular because Arizona Cardinal about an hour later. Hey, oh, hey, hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> of course, that was in the top of them. Hasn't it been two fabulous days at Aintree so far? Right, the gents are ready. OK, let's get up as well. We open up the trading floor to you. Uh, the markets from William Hill. Get on your app. Get on the website. It's really easy. Go to Saturday Racing. Up comes Aintree. Believe it or not, I think there's a race running at Chelsea, do you believe it, at this time as well. Let us hear your big fancies. We'll be giving you our one, two, three, fours. We'll be going through each and every runner. Yet yeah, a horse by odd, pin stickers guy, call it what you want. If you've got your sweepstakes, we're going to have some fun with it. Stick with us for the next hour or so. This is exactly what's coming up on your screen then. We'll be looking at the paper for you. We'll be giving you a Grand National preview. Then the big races before the naps. And Jamie McBride, who's been with us for the last couple of weeks, he's one of the William Hill's top traders. What sort of day are we expecting man yeah morning dave uh yeah it's been tough going for uh bookmaker so far the entry this week so hopefully uh the worm turns slightly for us but uh i'm not sure we'll get much ag agreement on that but uh yep looking forward to a big day a big big day indeed there's no boost by the way because they're expecting this show to put so much traffic on the website and the app we want it to work i mean it's one of these days kills isn't it where you could be sitting in a in a fishing village in peru and you'd find it on a telly yeah absolutely it's watched all around the world isn't it you know so uh, and everybody's going to try and have a punt fishing you? village in peru well, i don't know where one, i got that from i'm not sure <laughs> well, but i was thinking of somewhere I'm remote <laughs> Have you visited a fishing village <laughs> in well, Peru? Well, I've, I've been to Peru. Why Peru? Of all the places. <laughs> listening to you say that and looking at Tom's face behind me. Earth is going Well, on. listen, if you're in a fishing village in Peru, welcome along. I'll, I'll, do, I'll, do, I'll do my best. And now, shall we go? Shall we actually go to Liverpool? Because we're great to have him on the show as well. Deputy Irish editor, probably the busiest man this week at the Racing Post. There he is, looking sublime Smartest, as ever. Man. DJ, morning. Uh, good morning, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if I'm quite as busy as, as Keels and Tom. They've been churning out the copy all week and putting up plenty of winners. Well done to Keels and your 22 winner yesterday, and Tom was on fire on Thursday. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think you're right about that. That's your first loser of the day, I think. Uh, first of many, no doubt. Lots of viewers on this show will be saying, set the scene for us then, DJ. You're up there. What sort of weather are we expecting? A lot of people would be thinking this is like the Red Marauder year of 2001, where only, I think, three completed. But it's drying all the time, surely. It is drying all the time. It was actually a gorgeous day there yesterday. It was ladies' day. I was walking around like this all day, pretending not to look, but really I was looking. Uh, some serious glamour, let me tell you. Ladies' day at Liverpool is not to be missed. If you haven't been to ladies' day at Aintree, uh, put it on the bucket list because it's a great day. Uh, weather was fabulous. It was really warm day there yesterday. And actually this morning we were up early and uh, we, I was surprised when I stepped outside the door 
that kind of heat hit me about 16 degrees and um, so i think it's drying out all the time and looking at the weather there's a little bit of rain coming in later but we might get away with it by the time the grand national comes along so i think if you are looking for those mudlarks and i was really keen on galley de, de la toe earlier on the week and i still am but i don't think it's going to be half as hard work as we thought it was going to be earlier on in the week yeah, that's you and me both, DJ. We'll get the top fours from all the panellists. Great to have DJ with us. Uh, we, oh, I won't concentrate on that yet because we are going to talk about her chance in full. Uh, thoughts about today? I mean, Kills, we were on the show last week and we were expecting perhaps a Red Marauder a year. Hasn't materialised. Uh, hasn't materialised. The times are slow enough, though. I mean, it is soft ground. It's just not what we thought it was going to be. Because, you know, it looked like, you know, just non-stop rain, 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 rain. And actually, it wasn't that bad. But it's still soft. It's still proper soft ground, I think. Talk about the fences at Aintree, Posty. A lot of people putting up pictures of the first on social media, uh, which is, look, however we look at this, last year was in a bit of an aberration of a year. They had to make changes, but uh, what do you make of it? Yeah, I mean, that they. I think it's fair to say they're not what they once were, are they? You know, I mean, um, we were is talking... Is the chair not still a bit daunting? I mean, like the, 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 the third fence in the, in the National, the open ditch away from the stand, is still a, it's still a massive obstacle, you know. So, and, and I think the, the one we're put, the, uh, putting up often is the first fence in the Topham and the Fox Hunters, isn't it? Which is, which is notoriously not a very big fence. But I think we were talking about it off air. I think you have to factor that in, that the entry <laughs> factor, as in the jumping, is definitely not what it used to be. And so I think you can probably see a far more classy animal and also a horse... They don't have to be a brilliant jumper to get round. Let's go back up to Yorkshire. I say this with a slightly wry smile after listening to Posty there. Uh, Jamie, this is a specials crazy day, right? You've probably got loads of them at Williams Hill that I haven't even seen so far, and I've seen a lot of them. This was one in particular which you might have got wrong. Yeah, we were 5-4 to four early in the week, and uh, obviously, like uh, you've referenced, the pictures of the first some people have tweeted out, it does look particularly small, so... We've laid plenty of that. That's now four to six for them all to clear it. Uh, but like you say, yeah, I've got plenty of specials out on the race. That one's been uh, lively. And the other main one is who will go off favourite. That's been really lively all week. We've taken a good few quid on that. Looks as though I am Maximus might be winning that race at the moment, but there's still time for that to change. Yeah, the favourite to be favourite, of course. Who put out the five to four then? Was it you, Jamie? <laughs> uh, I'll say yes, it was. It was. I won't throw Johnny under the bus. <laughs> but I will. <laughs> Johnny the judge. All right, Simpson, of course. All right, great to have Jamie with us. He's going to be fingers on the buzzers. Any questions you've got out there for the traders, get them in. We've got a great team in the gallery. Let's get going, shall we, with the paper roundup then. This is what you can get, of course, if you get pick up the racing post today. I imagine this is the one day where your, your granny, your butcher, your candlestick maker is going down to the news agents and buying it. Uh, and indeed, fisherman in Peru. In Peru. A fisherman yeah. in Peru has got this. Let me tell you. And of course, digitally, that could be possible, guys. So don't throw me under the bus. But what a great front page that was. Now you get double bubble here on page two. Chris Cook, of course, and Lee Motterzed looking for the national winner. Your expert guide starts here. Unmissable stuff there. Rambler back to defend his crown after a gold cup boost. Of course, that's referencing Jerry Colom in the bowl. Gold cup form, perhaps unsurprisingly, that's strong. Uh, now. Christian Williams hoping for emotional triumph with Kitty's light. Absolutely, Williams family. This would be the story of the race. And David Carr covers it so well. You must go and read that if you're not sure what we're on about. That's there. His beautiful daughter, Betsy. Great to see her up at the track this week. Revolutionary card for pointing punters towards big winners. Now, this is the smart view, of course. Keith Melrose, you can see there. Who do they like? There's the smart view. One, two, three, four. Look at this. Absolutely. Look, it's all there. It's designed basically, guys, to make this a bit easier for you. They've been churning out winners at the course this week. A lot of favourites. But uh, it's all been going rather well for them. And, of course, if you'd like to get your sweepstake kit, look no further. This is online, of course, not in your paper today. The Racing Post Grand National Sweepstake Kit. Marvellous. All right, OK, that's the paper done. And why don't we smarten up our act? Fancy a bet, but find it confusing? Do not fear. Smartview is here to help you. We've taken the traditional race card and removed all the jargon and abbreviations, which can be daunting for newcomers. The result is a race card that means making informed choices and picking winners is easier than ever. Our racing experts and data scientists have created an algorithm that puts everything a seasoned punter would consider into the attribute bars you see on the race card and assesses each runner with an overall score out of 100. 
Thank you, Keith Melrose, betting editor, then talking to you about that. Nice and easy to get involved. Six places then on the national instead of four. Six places all over the shop today at William Mills. Incredible value. There is the current market then. And Corrett Rambler, not favourite. It emerged about 24 hours or so ago. The drift on him began, if you remember, straight after Cheltenham. How low did he go? Uh, it was a short was seven to two in a place, I think. What? It was four and nine to two, definitely. Yeah, it was, it was about four to one. I think. Which put a lot of people off, didn't it, obviously? We'll, we'll get to him. All right, okay. So uh, now looks like Iron Maximus. Maybe pressure coming from Limerick Lace. A lot of chat about that, including from Connections. I mean, some of those horses, you think back to when we were doing the previews of this guys back in February just for Cheltenham. Wow, they've literally, you know, hemorrhaged in price. Like, so Panda Boy, Kitty's Light would go down. Uh, Meeting of the Waters looks like he's stood out a little bit. Jamie, let's just come to you. Where's the current traffic going then? Favourite to be favourite. You've mentioned it already. I am Maximus in the amphitheatre that is Aintree. Yeah, he's the strongest at the front end, like I said, but the, the, not by loads. Uh, I wouldn't say it's fair to complete that. He's definitely go, going to go favourite. Panda Boy's been really solid and... Uh, I wouldn't put it beyond Cora Crambler to short him again. It was a similar story last year, and when he gets down to the 4 to 1, 9 to 2, everyone looks to oppose him and they don't really want to take that kind of price in the Grand National. But suddenly you're getting 8, 9 to 1 about something who is well handicapped, um, and obviously he's proven he can do it. So I w it wouldn't be a big surprise if he contracted slightly from where he is at the moment. All right. Okay, Jamie will keep us updated on that. Don't forget, we're going to preview the main races in their entirety. But now it is time that you've been waiting for the horse by horse guide. And we're going to try and whistle through these as quickly as possible. The guys will embellish on their selections when they give the one, two, three, four at the end of the show. Do you know what, DJ? I'm going to start with you. Tell us about the chances of Noble Yates. Uh, Noble Yates, obviously a previous winner of the race. Um, it's interesting what Emmett has done here. He's, he's a real improviser. And this year, what he's tried to do is not run the horse over fences. So the last time he ran over fences was back in France last summer. He's been running over hurdles. He obviously has won uh, a grade two hurdle. Um, I just wonder, is he as well handicapped as you know these top weights have been in the past couple of years? I think he's, he's probably vulnerable to something less exposed. I think he'll finish somewhere between third and seventh. Third and seventh, like that. You've set the tempo. Uh, Kiel's Nassalan. Nassalan will finish somewhere between 10th and 34th, I think. No, he was, <laughs> listen, I love Nassalan. He was, he was my absolute banker at Cheltenham last year and jumped like a pig. And he jumped like a pig in the Gold Cup, having jumped spectacularly well uh, here over, over these fences. Grand Sefton. And in the, uh, and and the Welsh in, Nash. And in the Welsh National. Yeah. So whether his confidence has gone again, I don't know. But he ruined his handicap mark at Chepstow. And uh, I can't really see it after making no show in the Gold Cup. Hardly an ideal prep. Big day for Caelan Quinn. Good young man on the up. Uh, Coco Beach, Charlie Post. Yeah, second in the beach. Uh, hard to believe he's only nine. Been around forever. He's travelled well in this race the last couple of years. Stamina is far from guaranteed. Capadano, Tom. Ah, he's an interesting horse, Capadano, isn't he? Classy horse. Won the uh, Cotswold Chase, didn't he? Beating Ahoy Senor, amongst others. Uh, then ran in the... Ryanair, fourth in the Ryanair, staying on. I know the connections think he's, a, he's, he's got a bit of a shot at a big price, so he's not a, he's not a forlorn hope at all. Quite like the jockey booking of Keith Donoghue there as well. Uh, right, Kills, but he has fallen on you, actually, before I go back to DJ. I'm going to talk to you about I Am Maximus. We know that you're on a whopping prices. Why? Um, well, he was just a way too big a price after finishing third to Gallop into Champs, and I was there at Leopardstown, and he actually bounded up the straight. I know he was a long way behind, 17 lengths or whatever, but he just bounded up the straight like a fresh horse. And uh, he was 50 to 1 afterwards, and I just thought that plain daft, because he was obviously coming here. Um, so, yeah, I managed to snuffle a few quid. Would I back him at 7 to 1? Not 100% sure I would. Ooh, but that's uh, maybe. Uh, you know, it's... You know, I'm going, to, I'm going to be roaring him home, obviously, but I tipped something else in the paper today. He does have a tendency to jump left, which you think going left would suit him, but his best form was all at Fairy House. Um, I do like him. I think he'd be ridden on the outside. Um, that tendency to jump left, you wouldn't worry about it on a left-handed track if there weren't 34 runners, but the chance of bump, jumping into something uh, is obviously rises, but I think he's got the class. And if he warms to the fences and doesn't do anything silly, he's got to be there or thereabouts. DJ, let's come to you with this before I come to Tom for a final word on him. Uh, this was always going to be Paul Townend's ride. Has this, as the Irish National winner last season, always been the plan? <laughs> DJ's DJ. looking very, very, very... <laughs> 
very studious about that. He's I'll not come sure. to the top of this. We're going to spend a bit of time on Iron Maximus, obviously. We'll get DJ back. Uh, I went, I'm not going to throw you under the bus like everyone else has been throwing the bus so far. You but I said, I said to you, this looks to me like a bit more of an open national, to which a couple of the big names in here So, oh, no, 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 not having that. In fact, all three of them did. Why do you think... Well, I think there's two horses, and we'll get to Korak Rambler in a minute, that stand out in terms of class. And I think Iron Maximus is one of them. The problem is he's a bit of a lummox. That's my word for the week, by the way. <laughs> he's not a brilliant jumper by any stretch of the map. Now, whether that matters that much in a, in a Grand National these days, I don't know. But he could get behind. He could get back. Uh, he's got class. But I'm also slightly put off that all his very best form is at one track. He's run well at Leopardstown, but his very, very best form is at Fairy House. But th th this is a flat track, isn't it? And, yeah, you know but it's I mean? the other if way around. It's just... It's just he's, he's, it's, it's just it's just slightly niggling. That's yeah. just slightly right. niggling to me. But he's a strong stayer, and he's got class, and he's trained by a genius. So what's not to like? Well, listen, that brings us beautifully on to Manella Indo. We'll try. We'll, as soon as DJ comes back, I'm going to go back to him about that Paul Tannen question. Uh, Manella Indo, Gold Cup winner, would have obviously liked to have given him the run at Cheltenham in the cross country, which was abandoned, but trained by a genius and got the class. This is another one, and he's a much much bigger price. Yeah, I mean, like like you say, he's got in a massive amount of back class. 2021 Gold Cup winner. Personally, I think if the, the cross-country race had been on at the festival, he'd have had more chance in that than this. Right, very succinct. Anyone else from another window before I move on? No, not really. I think, I think the ground will I, 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 I could certainly give him a chance. Yeah, definitely he's, give him a chance, yeah. He's, he's got to run better than life in the I past. I fancied him for the cross-country, and I've backed a horse that would have... He would have raced again in the yeah. against in the green short yeah. at this. About so. the same price, weren't Jamie they? McBride, is this a potential buzzer in the market simply because of you know, not just because he's a gold cup winner, Rachel. but it's the Rachel Blackmore effect. It definitely is, yeah. We'd expect it, uh, him to shorten up. You'd, things like uh, Jungle Boogie in the Gold Cup SP at sixteen, where if any, anybody else had ridden it, it would have been fifty to one. So it it she does have a big following and it does affect uh, the price definitely. There you go. It's it's that sort of mm. race, isn't it, guys? It is. Mm. It's madness, you know. I mean, a, a name as we know, we definitely read. Bless old, definitely read a couple of years ago. Liverpool, you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. It's, it's a weird race. Oh, isn't it, it does work like that, doesn't it? Because there's so many once in a once in a year punters, aren't they? So they come in and they. They do it by names and people they know, and so Rachel's going to be popular, surely. Lots of people talking up Manila Indo, I think, on the community because you're so dismissive of it, quite rightly That's so. That's fine, yeah. <laughs> uh, OK, DJ, you're back, thank goodness. I just want to come back to you on that question about Paul Townend and Iron Maximus. We, we can hone in a bit oh. more on him. And he goes to the clown. Uh, the girl <laughs> with the clown, do you remember that when, you went, when oh, the TV yeah. used to go off at night? Uh, the clown is up there in Liverpool, but it's not DJ, let me tell you. Um, all right, OK, let's keep moving on then while we try and get DJ back. Korak Rambler, who wants to start me, with this one? I me, guess he's got, I think he's got a massive chance. Now, pause on that. I was with him last year and I've kicked him out begrudgingly of my top four. Why? I do think he had a much harder race. But you don't know that. Well, I, it looked like he was walking to me up but there. He gave, he gave Galapan de Chom and Jerry Colomb about 20 lengths and got it down to about two. Any but, horse. Uh, you've got to, Arkle uh, would be tired doing that. Well, that's what I mean. You've got to be taking pot. Like the amount of Cheltenham Festival runners, winners that have come and backed up at this meeting, surely, no? There's loads of jukebox. I, Man could hardly stand at the end of it. I, also, I know he's on race. the same mark as Tiger when he backed up, so I give him that. But I, I'm not sure. I think of the two horses, I think Iron Maximus is probably the classier one. What? Right. Corrett, Corrett what? Rambler's a better horse than Tiger Roll, though, no? Is he? You seriously think I am Is Corrett Rambler is... genuinely a better horse than Tiger Roll? I think if you look at his like, CV and the public differently, affection... Lots of people wanted to run I him think, in the I cup, think you're they? completely way off the mark. How mm, can you say okay. that horse that's won two Ultimas, a Grand National, and been third in the you're Gold Cup? You're talking about cup. handicap, though, aren't you, at Cheltenham? third in the Gold Cup? A, yeah, no, that, of course, that, that was a massive one. Iron Maximus was 28-1 to 1 for the RSA, the yeah, Brown but, Advisory, yeah, and finished he, fourth. Listen, he's a completely different horse this year, isn't he? He's won a Drimmore, oh, he's won an Irish National. I don't know This is a very he's good horse. Drimmore, I think you're right? really under Where would Corrette Rambler have Rambler? finished at Leopardstown? Dave, stick to presenting, pal. Stick to the presenting. I used to be a better tips than... <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, okay. We are getting spicy, and that's what we want. It's the national. Gills is laughing over there because he's nicely sitting out of this one. Don't worry, Tom. I'll stamp on his foot. No, yeah, I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on, don't you go there. I begrudgingly had to kick him out. Am I wrong or am I right? Who's? It's, we've got. And like I say, it was a brilliant moment last year. I love those dearly, but I just think I think this is. I just think this is a stronger race. DJ, you're there. First of I'm all. Back. First of all, Tiger Roll or Corrick Rambler, who's better? <laughs> who's better between Tiger Roll and Corrick Rambler? Come on, DJ, back me up. 
Uh, well, I, I have no idea what you said because I was offline there. But uh, as regards Aintree, I would say definitely Tiger Roll. But yes. as regards, oh, as regards, a minute. You, after as regards, today, you won't think that. Oh, oh, I'm not finished my answer. <laughs> as regards ability, there's no way Tiger Roll can finish third in the Gold Cup. Oh, oh he, DJ he's sat on the done. fence. Uh, he's sat on the fence, hasn't he? He's, given, he's gone both ways. Now, how do you think he survived so long in his in his position? This is what you do. I just backed. I just backed that question each way there. <laughs> <laughs> Quite right. Ah, Two places, good. and you've got it spot on. And now going back to that question about Paul Townend, he was always going to ride Iron Maximus since the Irish National. Has this always been the plan? I mean, he's won a trim more. He's a freaky horse himself. He is. Was he always going to ride him? Um, maybe he was. Uh, Mark Walsh, it's funny, like he's a JP man has owned horse in Ireland that, that Mark Walsh has very seldom seldom ridden. I don't know actually if he has because Jody McGarvey has obviously been on him quite a lot. Uh, I think what I am Maximus, he is so unorthodox, right, for a Grand National because he doesn't jump particularly well and he doesn't travel very well. But what he's got is tremendous ability. And I think if you have in-running viewers watching this show, he is your typical in-running play because if I am Maximus starts loving it over those first four or five fences, he's going to be a massive player. But he could absolutely hate it as well. He's one of these. I think he'll either win or go very close to winning or he'll be pulled up or won't finish. I, I couldn't see him finishing between like third and seven, put it that way. I think he's either going to win the race or he's, he's not going to be at the business end at all. All right, OK, there you go. Definitive answer. We're still not sure. But I sort of no, agree no, with you. No, no, we're sure. Today. You're sure? We're and I'm sure. Not, okay. I, don't know, okay. I don't get your obsession with the Drinmore. What, well, well was... because he's, he, he's won a novice chase this year. This season. What's that got to do with it? Well, no national horse does that. Win a novice chase and then goes and wins a national. Well, name me a, name me a, 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 a national winner. <laughs> was, he a, was he a novice? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't back in. <laughs> I didn't back in. Thank you, DJ. You can go yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, all right, OK. All right. <laughs> all right, OK. Let's get back to this. I've all right. to just say that I have back. I, have back, I want him to win. I, I wanted to oppose Corrick Rambler because he was four to one. If I had the choice of backing the two now, now we're getting somewhere. At those prices, I would back Corrick Rambler. And you're obviously in the same list. That's and that is for Corrick This is where Rambler. I was actually going with this, funnily enough. At 72 after, after Cheltenham, he must have thought, well, I'm not tipping that. Of course not. Right. Of course not. But now he's too big a price because he has the best recent form and he won the race last year. Think of a national winner that came back and doesn't run a big race after they've won it. They all do. Yeah. Noble Yates was placed. Yeah. Hedge Hunter, Tiger Roll. Well, you know, obviously going back through the years, they all run really well again. There's no way he's not going to run well. So, all right, everyone's with him then it, it, on the argument of that of, of seven or eight to one. Is he in everyone's top four? Can we yeah. just get that no. out of the way now? No, he's not in no. my no. Right, not in okay, my. obviously, yes, yes, yes. All, no. right. all right, so it is a bit marmitey, DJ, so I can hear saying as well, he's not as well. Let's move on, shall we? That's correct. Right, we've given the big names some good guys. Is it Janadil next, number eight? Yes, it is, Janadil. Uh, quick one with this, DJ. Jody McGarvey rides. Yeah, uh, in terrible form, doesn't stay, can't win. Doesn't stay, can't win. Okay, so you've got one of those that's in there. there to keep horses that could win out. Oh, yeah, but yards. we've got to try not to get too oh. political. But here we are. Well, we've got another one coming up here. Give us the line on Statler then. Because oh, this... but excellent chance. <laughs> no, no, no. Old, on old form, he's got a chance, hasn't he? Stays very well. Uh, was he a winner? Was he Periphery a Gold Cup or something. Yeah, best, periphery Gold Cup, but looks way out of form and uh, I'm not sure he'll like their ground. And Roy Bartlett last week was saying he won't run. The ground is drying. but Soft, good to soft in places. Now, soft good to soft good in places. To places now, so yeah, that's all right. Um, he had the ability, he did. You know I mean, did. he is a horse that it has a bit of back class that could bounce back, okay. but you can say that about everything in the race because yeah, they're in the yeah, race. But he's not, yeah, exactly. no, no, but he's, element, no, but he's not, you know, it, he also has the stamina, yeah, you know what I mean. Whereas there are some horses in the race that just don't, no, shouldn't be there. He, you know, he's entitled to be there, yeah, on the fact that. He has won big races over long distances. OK, so 40 to 1 with William Hills at a minute and Patrick Mullins rides, who uh, went close enough on Animix in the Fox Hunter. Right, let's get to Marla Mission, shall we? Number 10. Posty, come to you with this. John McConnell, I don't think a layoff like this has been done before. I think the, the layoff they're, they're saying is a negative, yeah, the, the plus 100 days, I think, since last run. Um, John McConnell's form is a bit in and out as well. Other than that, I think the horse is... Out, isn't it? But then, <laughs> why is he? Didn't he come out back? Out, just out, it? yeah, yeah. Cheltenham yeah, week, yeah. he had a few away winners, I think, didn't he? <laughs> it was very bad during the winter. It got, it got yeah, but Henderson-like. Aside from that, I think he's got an excellent chance. You know, he fell in the National Hunt Chase looking likely to, to win two out and then back that up with a, a very good second in, in what was formerly the Hennessy at Newbury in November. Haven't seen him since then, but I think he ticks a lot of boxes. 
Tom? Well, the modern nationals are throwing up the trends, aren't they, and blowing them up, and mm. everything's changed. So, not worried about the. I'm not worried about the, the layoff. No. I think he's been trained specifically for the days. Very good target yep. trainer, John McConnell. Yep. He said in an interview that he didn't have him perfect for the coral for the race at the Old Hennessy, the Gold mm. Trophy, whatever it's called. But he's spot on for today, so I could see him running really well. Jamie McBride, uh, Marla Mission, strong in the market. He is, yeah. Like uh, you've been saying, he's got very obvious chance. Uh, he has been popular. Um, he's just one of those who could just have a bigger effort in him. Like it's not totally exposed over fences. Uh, he was good running the Hennessy last time. Yeah, he's been very popular. DJ, I'm trying to work out your top four in my head as we're going down them. Is this chap anywhere near it? Oh, he's two. He's two. Maller Mission is is almost joint one now at the moment with the ground drying out. It was very much Galia de la Tau, but Maller Mission, just if you watch the, the old Hennessy, as as Tom called it again, very, very <laughs> cleverly done, Tom. Um, I, I, I thought with Maller Mission, he absolutely loved it, and he kind of screamed Grand National that day. I know the McConnell stable are out of form, but he's a good trainer, and he is a good target trainer. I think he's going to love this, and uh, yeah, he's the one that I can see up there in the van throughout, and I think he's going to stay there. I think he's going to be smack bang where you want him to be crossing the, the, the Melling Road for the final time. Just tell us a quick word on Ben Harvey, DJ, because a lot of viewers won't know the name, but John's obviously put a lot of faith in this young man, hasn't he? He has indeed, and he's got loads of experience. Like, he's a, he's a good horseman. He's held in high regard. He's, he's ridden some big race winners as well, and he's, he's, he's ridden at some big meetings. So I, I, I'd have no problem with Ben Harvey whatsoever. If you fancy Maller Mission, don't be put, be put off by the jockey. Yeah, Nile Slippers Madden, of course, uh, came in on number six Valverde. Uh, the whole country, country hadn't really heard who he was, and it just shows you can go and do it. Can't you first time up? Uh, let's go to Delta Work now, moving along. Uh, a horse with form in the race. He's 25 to 1 with Hills at the minute. Paul Keeley. Uh, yeah, I like him. I don't see why he hasn't got a really good chance. He has run in the race the last two years. He was third to Noble Yates two yep. years ago. He was going well when unseating at the 21st last year. Um, looked like he might not quite got home two years ago, but he had had a real set two with Tiger Roll on heavy ground in the cross-country race, and he yep. comes here fresh. Gordon Elliott's in the paper today. He says he's showing all the right signs. He can be a little bit clumsy, obviously, just because he, you know, he unseated and it wasn't his first mistake last year, but he's got... He's got ability. He was being primed for one race in the spring. He's missed that. He's come here a fresh horse. Um, I think he's. I think he's. Do you a like the blinkers, Kiels? Uh, I don't mind. He won. was worn other headgear, hasn't he? Yeah, cheap piece. Uh, you know what I mean. I'm not, I like a switch for the national. I think it's a good moment to do it. And Gordon Elliott's been talking him up, hasn't he? Yeah, well, he's, Gordon Elliott's got a brilliant record in handy staying handicap chases. He's won this a few times, hasn't he? So if you're going to run eight runners in it, you're going to horses have. You know, he'd been a little bit quiet, hasn't he, Gordon Elliott? His horses have run very it, well this week. He even brought that up himself in an interview, saying I was on the old cold list, as we used to know, and mm. very happy to have one in Ireland, of course, during eight week, and we saw what, what Joe Kilometer have done since. All right, so one at a big price, then it could well go. One of those beautiful horses that comes back every year and runs a big race in the National. What's coming up next is the question. Foxy we go Jacks. to Foxy Jacks. Oh my God, DJ, I want to come to you with this. I seem to mention you, you used to have an old obsession with Foxy Jacks. Every time I used to listen Not to you. Not old, Dave. Or, or it's, it's, oh, it's still new. going, is it? It's still going. <laughs> yeah, I, I was fancying Foxy Jacks to bit, run a big race in the cross country at Cheltenham. Unfortunately, it was called off. Look, this fella is gas. Gas is funny in, in, in Irish lingo. He's, he's, he's a gas horse because he can't jump straight. So Gavin Bruder, I remember speaking to him after he won the, at the November meeting. It was a handicap that day. And he said, I've actually got to know this horse so well. He either goes right or he goes left, whatever he gets into his head. And you just, instead of trying to get him to, to jump straight, you just have to actually let him do his own thing. So he'll go slightly right, slightly left. It's not dramatic or anything like that. It's not like sometimes I am Maximus can be. But he does slightly go one way or the other. And he said, you just have to let him do it. You can't interfere with him. So he could play havoc a little bit. But he's he's a horse that's had a terrific season. He won the Leinster National at Kelbegan. He's one of these horses who could run really well. But look, he's rated 157, and I don't think he's talented enough to be rated 157. Yeah, I must admit, DJ, I must... when I was going through all of them, I, I saw 157 put a line straight through. All right, that's Foxy Jacks. Galvin, so I want to come to you on this. Again, in the same ownership as uh, Statler, and another one that they said won't run if it's too heavy, Gordon Elliott. Yeah, fell at the first last year, didn't he, when he was very well fancied. I think Davy Russell's last ever ride. Wow. Uh, uh, won't be doing that this year, will he? Won't be for now. What, falling at the first or ridden by Davy Russell? Falling at the first. <laughs> Neither. Oh, Jamie hopes well, he will with all the money that's been on it. Uh, but uh, back form, 
he's better horse than Statler, in my opinion, and he's getting more weight. And if the ground dries out, I know when the weights came out, Gordon said this was his best chance. And I wonder if the, the drying ground, if it does get to good to soft, if it's a nice day, whether he more, comes into it more than everyone is imagining at this time. 40 to 1, Tom. Big price, well, isn't it? Like 100 to 30 for a Gold Cup. Yeah. Yeah. All right. OK, Sam Ewing got the lucky ride there, then ground turning in the favour of Galvin. Farouk Delane. DJ, I'll come to you on this. I've got a feeling this might be another succinct one. Uh, no, it's funny. I got a, a message from our old buddy, old pal, Bruce Millington, last night. And he said, what, what has Gordon been telling you about Farouk Delen? I have a sneaky suspicion he could run well. And it's funny because if you go back to his actually Brown advisory run, he was banged there at the second last when he came down. Now, he's shown nothing like that since. Very disappointing in the Pretems final. I can't really have him on my mind, but I wouldn't be surprised if he finished somewhere between 6th and 12th. <laughs> which, which Bruce will now be spending oh, yeah, yeah. his, his breakfast Three up. times over fences in the last 25 months, two falls and a 25-length yeah. yeah, shouldn't. That really was a bigger there. section than I thought it was going to be about Farouk Delen, of course. Who's he trained with? Is it, it, it's Gordon. He's Gordon, Gordon. yeah. yeah. Whatever happened to Norman? He'd be fine. He'd be fine. He'd be fine. I backed him for the Potemps final fine. of top weight, so yeah. I can't slag him off that much. DJ, I can't believe we're giving 125 to one shot so much air. Yeah, yeah, well, I was just saying he'd be fine over these hurdles, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> An unseat does count, by the way, of, of, of those specials to go. El Dorado Allen, uh, number 15, for the Tizards. Yeah, um, had wind surgery since, dis you know, but he ran all right in the autumn, early in the season. Disappointing the last twice. Won't stay. Won't stay. I mean, it's a horse who ran in the Arkle a few years ago when he was second to Shishkin, but he did stay quite pretty well in the, in, in the uh, in Hennessy, didn't he? Yeah. Like, you know, he was the one that was running on at the death. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a, I have a bit of a soft spot for him. I wouldn't back him. I'd love to see him one well. Not quite a Foxy Jats obsession, no. but I do know no, he, no, uh, no. he's dipped a few times. Yeah, because yeah, he's pulled it out of the bag for you a few times. Uh, yeah, yeah, all right. He's a, he's a beautiful grey that will go uh, for well for a long way. Brendan Powell rides. Second time off a window. I'm just looking down. Ain't that a shame? Now in the in the, these mm. colours, the maxi colours of David Maxwell. Now I know someone, a racing fan, who has promised to shave every bit of hair on his body if this wins. Right? It was bought specifically for the natural. But that is the sort of marmite opinion that David Maxwell has with regular punters. Is it all a bit mad? I mean, I know he unseated it. It was in the totally mad shaving your well, Every <laughs> bit of hair. That's what. That's such a strong opinion that this has got no chance whatsoever. Trained by Henry de Bromhead. DJ loves this horse. I know about it as well. We'll get to him. And he's gone to David Maxwell. But because of the rider, no, people he's got a running. chance. He's, he is mad. I don't think he's. I don't, last year he didn't stay. The horse did or Maxwell? We're both mad. Yeah. Yeah. Or the guy that's going to be bald. <laughs> <laughs> last year he definitely didn't stay, but the Thiestes chase last time is just about one of the biggest stamina tests in Ireland, and he yeah. definitely did Very strong stay. at the end of that. He was he? really strong at the yeah. end, and he beat a, a good. It's a, always a good race to Thiestes, and he won it despite being. The problem with him is he's too keen, and if David is going to have a struggle settling him, and therefore he definitely won't stay. But. If he got in a perfect rhythm, he, he's, he ran well for a really long way last David year. David will also be knackered. Well. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you've got to say, the rider is a negative. <laughs> is, of course it is, yeah. Of course it is. He's, a, he's an absolute genius, David Maxwell. He's a, no, he's a top man, him. and you've got to love what he does, yeah. but you've got to factor that in as well, haven't you? Yeah. And the, I mean, one, it, the one time you go against him, <laughs> it's going to Listen, I can see fire. him having an absolutely yeah. brilliant spin, because this horse is a yeah. brilliant jumper. Well, this is a horse you've got an obsession with DJ, right? Ah, kind of, yeah. I'm like Tom. This horse could not possibly win a Grand National on his run last year. I tipped him in this race last year, and I was getting so excited. We did a live show. After the third last, he was absolutely tanking under Rachel, and he went from 10 to 0 in about 10 strides. It was gone. The petrol was gone. And then in the Thiestis, it was the first time I have seen him properly finished in a race in his career. You go back to the to the Munster National at Limerick when I think he traded at 1.03 in running. Should have won that day. Should have won the Paddy Power chase at Leopardstown when he led over the last and got tired up the running. But we saw something different in him in the Thiestis. And I had been giving him no chance whatsoever. And now he kind of scares me a little bit, Dave. Oh, OK. And Dave, uh, Johnny... Uh David, where's he going to finish? 8th to 25th or...? Uh, I would say somewhere between uh, 5th and 9th. 
Oh. Ooh, okay, all right. Definitely hedging bets and Becky each way today. Right, if you write all of these down, Dave's going to have about 14 horses finishing between 5th <laughs> and 11th. And and <laughs> there is a market somewhere at Hills, and if there isn't, we'll get Jamie McBride to do it. Right, okay. We're coming up to a proper Marmite horse next. He was one of the eye catchers in the race for many last year. It's Vanillier. Let's hear from his trainer and William Hill ambassador, Gav Cromwell. I'm delighted to be joined by William Hill Ambassador Gavin Cromwell, who runs Vanillier and Limerick Lace uh, in the Grand National. First of all, we'll start off with uh, yesterday's runner, I Know The Way You're Thinking, who won the Mild Way uh, May after winning the Kim Muir in impressive fashion at the Channel Festival. Gavin, he looks like a really impressive horse. Where do you think he can go to next season? Um, yeah, listen, it was a it was a fantastic performance. Um, it's jumping could could be a little bit slicker than it was but um i suppose he would have learned a lot today um, i think he learned plenty in the commuter and he's he will he will have learned more today again so um he you know if he keeps going the right direction please god he you know he's gonna have to go into open company next year and hopefully he he can progress uh, i think he should do um his the size and scope and the mentality to do it so uh fingers crossed that he will yeah, he looks like a really exciting horse. Um, we'll move on to the Grand National then. Uh, Vanillier obviously came second last year. Uh, how are you feeling going into this year? Conditions maybe suit him a bit more this year than last year? Uh, hard to say. I suppose the slow ground is going to um, slow the race down a little bit where, you know, he, he may maybe be able to hold his position better. Um, although I do find that he, he does enjoy a bit of spring ground and um it really brings him to life but i suppose it'll be we won't really know until until we try it but um uh he seems in good form and and uh, his work has been good lately so um he's proved before that he you know he has taken to defenses and uh it was really good run last year so a similar run will put him in the in the frame and i i suppose he'll have to improve to to win it yeah, I, I'd assume it would be safe to say that as of last year's Grand National, this has been the target then to get him back to the, the Grand National in a similar form as he was last year? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, his, his whole year has been um, has been all around going back to the Grand National. Fantastic. Uh, your other runner, Limerick, Limerick Lace, obviously. You've had a bag full of winners in the UK this year. Um, she's been pretty heavily gambled on over the last couple of days. She could go off a single figure price now. Um, how has she come out of the mayor's chase? Obviously that was a really impressive performance beating Dino Blue. Yeah, she's come out, she seems to have come out, out of out of it very well. Um, she, interestingly, she's a full sister to, uh, I know the way you're thinking, um, and they both, you know, he, he won at the Shelton Festival as well. So um, they both seem to have, have come out of the race well. Um, I suppose it's a little bit encouraging today to see her full brother um, stay in the trip really well. You know, that's that's my one concern is whether she's going to stay the, the Grand National trip. Um, she jumps well and uh, she seems in great form. So hopefully she can. Uh, we did school her over the Grand National fences. At the, they have a couple of Grand National fences built down at the Curra and she schooled over them and looked to have taken to it well. Lovely. And um, it must fill you with confidence. Mark Walsh had two winners on the Friday for JP. Uh, he's chosen Limerick Lace of all the JP runners. Uh, give you a bit of confidence, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. But listen, it's um, I think the JP ones, um, you know, they, I think most of them have a, have a right good chance. And I'd say it was a hard decision for Mark. Um, but it's nice that, that he has chosen her. Um, he did get to sit on her and school her over the fences and he obviously liked what he what he seen. Lovely. Well, um, thank you very much, Gavin. Really appreciate you coming on. Congratulations on a fantastic year and all the best for Vanilla and Limerick Lace tomorrow in the Grand National. Thank you. Charlie Sharp there doing the questions. Sharp by name, Sharp by name. She looks like he was going to a wedding there, Sharp. He didn't he? Either that or he was about to tell you about what a, like the man for the Prudential. Do you remember them? They used to be absolutely fantastic. That's why he had the William Hill colours on. He had the colours on as well, Sharp. He did. All right. Maybe a future at this game. Well, you've heard then about Vanillier. Uh, I, I've got to admit, this is one I really don't like. Why? I just don't. I just don't. I think the handicap mark has got him where he is. I think he's always one of those horses that runs on too late. I think he's just going to be one of those red herring oh, monkeys. I mean, you were saying. Neymar, Grand National, where that 
has come back and not run really well. Name a Grand Marshal second, but come back and has run really well. The last ten or so, ago, didn't last it? ten or so, have all been tailed off. Yeah. All and mm. all I just, there's something about him I don't know. I think the handicap um, mark is my, if, surely hasn't again another down. horse for uh, more it dries out the better. Yeah, he's got one of his top nine performances on RPRs has come on soft and good at soft or or yielding. So. Uh, I think he definitely wants it to dry out. I think the thing about him is he's not a very good jumper, but the fences now have allowed him, a bit like we, you were talking about Iron Maximus, to become a much more viable operator well, in a national. The thing about the fences is if you don't get scared and you're not a very good jumper, you can go through fences yeah. that you wouldn't be able to go and through. By the second course. circuit, they're about yeah. that high, aren't they? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so Yay high. I wouldn't, I, uh, any Gavin Cromwell handicap chaser, is very dip, very dangerous to rule out, and I think he will have been targeted at this race the whole year. Long. Will he be close enough to win the race? Thirty-four runners, he could be. He was, you know, he beat he beat thirty-nine others last year, didn't yeah. he? Sean Flanagan taking the ride then on Vanillier. Let's move on, Mister Incredible. Uh, Jamie, where's he? At one point in the uh, last twenty-four, forty-eight hours, I thought this guy might be hurtling his way towards favouritism. Loads of support for him. Yeah, he's another popular one. Um, I actually think this is the one at the front end. I'd be surprised if he won. I actually backed him last year, and I I didn't think he was that unlucky. I think he was just backing out of it and hadn't jumped great when the saddle slipped. So he's one uh, I'd be slightly surprised if won. And I'll just quickly mention before we get to number 19, Run Wild Fred's actually a non-runner. So that's uh, just come out in the last few minutes. Oh, don't worry. We're saving ourselves for that one, Jamie. Uh, the thing about <laughs> Mr. Incredible, he's got, he's got an issue, hasn't he, now? And it's the standing start, Dave. Mm. He, he's refused to race in the past, hasn't he? Yeah. And they have to, like, run him in. I'd be... I'd be it's a big risk, that. It's it been is, a lot of nutty. love for this guy, Kills, isn't there? Like, loads I mean, of it. Well, I mean, since, since he refused to race in that novice grade one, I mean, he's done very little wrong, hasn't very he? He's run incredibly <laughs> well in some really, really... But would you not rather back him once he's races. jumped off? I mean, yeah. I mean, they, the, the standing start is a very, very good point. Because so if you if you if you've not bet Mr. Incredible yet, the advice is to wait until yeah. I mean, you get over gonna, the hurdle. You gotta, it's quite hard to do. You got to be quick. You're not going to have a guy holding on to him while they're all standing. Well, still, to be honest, it is it is now much easier to do that, Jamie, isn't it? With firms, of course, you can you can wait and see. I remember I did it with Orson Neil Weather this week as well, who had a problem with the stall. She jumped off. She actually won as well, which is quite nice. But um, that, people can do it a lot easier than they used to do. You don't just need to get onto exchanges and stuff to do it anymore, do you? No, no, we will be betting and running, yep, like, so that's a good point. Uh, yeah, you can, if you want to, you can uh, take the opportunity to wait and see how well he sets off, how he, how he gets away and uh, bet him from that. DJ, final word on this. I remember again, I don't know why you're obsessed with all these horses, DJ, but I seem to remember you having an association with Mr. Incredible. I remember when we did the live show last year, you were talking about him a lot, and you implored us to, wa to watch a particular race where you said you've never seen a bigger monkey on the track or something, is, is my memory. Yeah, I, I think you. <laughs> I think when I talk about a horse, you think I'm obsessed with him. I've never been obsessed with Mr. Incredible. I, I've been obsessed. With, I've been obsessed with his personality. Uh, he is absolutely stone bunking mad. If you get a chance, if you're looking for a bit of comedy value today, go into the. I think it was his last race for Henry de Bramahead, where Henry de Bramahead just said, "Look, I've enough of this guy," because he ran a Tremor and mid race, everything was going fine, traveling away, jumping away, and then in between maybe this eighth or ninth fence, he just goes, "Stop." And he literally just stopped. He just stopped. <laughs> Nothing wrong with him. Everything was fine. He just stopped. And uh, Rachel Blackmore uh, reported to the stewards that her mount stopped quickly. And uh, Patrick <laughs> Mullins has done a phenomenal job with this horse. And uh, he is quirky. And he looked less quirky than ever I've seen him before in the Midlands National. Don't write him off. He could be in the, he could be in the first five anyway. Uh, it, it, it makes you think about trends, doesn't it? We were talking about last week, the Midlands Grand National, because Maddie Plough put it up on the show last week. Midlands Grand National's a horrible trial, if you well, like. Well, for winners, it? I don't, you know, I haven't looked, at, I haven't looked for place horses, uh, but it, it was four and a quarter mile on bottomless ground. Um, four weeks ago. The day after the Gold Cup. Yeah, but, but that was, that was his first, season, I know. Mean, it's still a fresh, Rollins team as well, isn't it? Also, isn't he? So, if anyone's ever going to buck it, it's Mr. Incredible because I of like the name. Jamie, I backed him last year and I didn't think he was going that well, but maybe they've changed a few things this year and, uh, and they'll go better. Right, well, we were going to be talking about number 19, Run Wild Fred. Uh, DJ, can you do us a favour while we're talking about this and look up the official reason that this is... It's lame. It's, it's, it's lame. lame. It's lame, right. Yeah. Okay, he's, yeah. he's out in his lane. 
We've got two non-runners today. Shambard doesn't go, pulled out in the morning. And we've got Run Wild Fred as well. One from an operation who has eight runners in the race. Now, horses lame, nothing yeah. you can do about that, right? That's the, that's the official bet certificate given. But this is the scenario the BHA desperately didn't want. Well, they were going to get it, weren't they? I mean, if you, if you, if you cut the field to, to 34 and don't put, allow reserves in, it's all what, I mean, look how many non-runners there are in any race. You've got much more chance of one being a lame or not turning up in the national. Uh, so what I don't get, and I think the boys agree, is why you can't have reserves anymore. What's, what's the problem with that? Why can't, you know, if you're the syndicate that own Molina Girl, they're only, you know, they've paid nothing for the horses. They're probably their life's ambition to get in the national. And you're one out, and then a couple come out, and that's crazy. Yeah, it you does seem a bit mad. Uh, Ch Charlie, let's come to you on this. Uh, why no reserves? Well, I mean, I, I don't know about the, the admin reasons, but I just do not see if you're Molina Girls, owners, trainer, as long as if you're happy to travel her to the races and let her be in the stables, knowing that there's a chance you're not going to get a run. But if you're happy to take that risk, I just do not see. I mean, crikey, Shambard was out yesterday, never mind that. And, and Run Wild Fred is out and it's, it's 10.45 this morning. I just don't see how it can be prejudicial to the horse welfare, having those horses at the races ready to slot in. If there's, you know, this is a million pound horse race, jumps race. Why we should be guaranteed a full field. I mean, there, there are, you know, there's lots of talk about the saying that bookmakers and punters don't like it because you back a horse and you think you've got these runners in it and then something comes parachuted in and beats you and whatever. Actually, it doesn't bother me. You know the rules. It's the same as, it's the same as if you're going to back a David Maxwell horse. You know he's on it. Right? You must know when you're looking at a race that there's a chance of these horses coming in. It works in Ireland. It wouldn't bother me. So yeah, it's a well, no-brainer. Why can't you back them, no, you know, non-runner, no bed if you're not, like, like, you know, even if they're down as a reserve, surely you'd be able no, to... No, it's not that. It's not that. It's a horse parachuting in and then beating the one that you'd back. Sure. Okay, right, fine. Uh, yeah. When you weren't expecting that was yeah. the run, you know what I mean? Which so. makes a lot of sense. There will be other shows at the Racing Post next week, which will be debriefing on all of this, OK? And I think there will be one. Uh, we've all got ideas. I remember at the start of the season we were talking about this, uh, and maybe even last year. There should be like a win in your inch, shouldn't there? We could go down yeah, all that. Should. All these big, you know, if you win the Welsh National, the Scottish National, the Irish National, you should be in next year's Grand Are we National all nodding at that? Kills, yeah, we're happy yeah. with that. All right, anyway, no run wild, Fred. Uh, which brings us to number 20 on the list, which is late night pass and I ought to come with you on this uh, chairman of the point to point what is it chairman of the owners and riders authority. owners yeah. authority yeah. he's yeah. a chairman guys we need yeah. to give him a bit of you know a bit more air than yeah. last year which is annoying yeah. but um, <laughs> what are they thinking about this also I saw Gina Ellis as she's now called a uh, local point to point in great form everyone was asking about it Tom her husband has said it's not been a day when we haven't had a camera crew into the yard Amazing horse. Yeah, incredible horse and, and a massive story if he were to win. You know, he's um, bred by Tom's mother, you know, owned by mum and dad, ridden by his wife. It's Tom's now just changed from being an amateur point to point trainer to a professional trainer. It's his first ever runner. And like the horse has an incredible record over the fences, 2 1 4 in, the, in, in previous runnings of the Hunter Chase. And, you know, I think he, he actually ran the cross-country race because it was one of Gina's ambitions before she retired to ride in the cross-country race. Well, he finished second, then he, then he won there, yeah. which I think suddenly pricked everyone's attention to the fact that maybe this horse was a, horse, it was a handicapper on the up, potentially had a workability in his mark. Disappointing prep run at Haydock back over hurdles. But it, whether he's well enough handicapped and good enough to win the race, I'd say he's very likely to run well because he loves the track. I'm, I'm going to do a DJ. Where's he going to finish now? Does anyone like the, the claims of this chap? Because they were worried about the ground a week ago, very worried. Now, with a bit of good to soft in places, anyone for the... I think he'll run a big race. He can finish in the top eight or so, yeah. I, I, you know, he'll get round, won't he, for he'll sure? He'll yeah. get round. He, likes to, you know, he jumps the fences really well. The only thing is, it's a bit like these Foxy Jacks we were talking about earlier, where you win those cross-country races, yeah. you shoot up the handicap, and now you're racing horses yeah, I mean, against better Fox, class horses. Exactly. And he, he I don't know what not he... guaranteed to stay either. I would right. have said. I don't know what Fox, I don't know what late night pass went up, but Foxy Jackson went up eight pounds for winning a yeah. across country handicap. It's bonkers. We went up nine. Right. Yeah, 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 that's that's it's completely yeah. bonkers. I mean, it's, it's One a lot. So where do they got mad. a requisite class? I know. You finish third in the gold cup, you go up three. But it's going to be a great spin if you're on late night passing your sweepstakes and what a story it could be. And all the old scribes will tell you, you need a story attached to a national winner. DJ, let's come to you about Manella Kruna. Not Kakuna, this is Kruna. Does he have any sort of chance to be singing about whatsoever? Absolutely no chance whatsoever in this world. Move on. Absolutely brilliant. That brings me to Adamantly Chosen, who I took oh, a little I like while him. to kick I like out him. my four.
I, 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 we did a show last night, and I've got looking at him, and he, he finished in front of Iron Maximus in a Grade One novice chase last year. He took a big step forward last time when he was up to three miles two furlongs. Uh, looking at the pedigree, there's a chance he'll get this trip. I could see him going well at a big price. He's in my four. Is he? Mm. Sean O'Keefe on board. Yeah. DJ, adamantly chosen. There's been a love for him, more than I thought possible. Yeah, he's surprised them. I don't think they ever thought he was a stayer, and now they think he is after what he did at Down Royal. He's he's intriguing. He's one of these that would you would never have had on your mind for the Grand National up on his run at Down Royal. That was three mile two. He was seemed to be only getting going over the second last over three mile two. Certainly see where the lads are coming from. Interestingly, adamantly chosen then, one of the Willie Mullins battalion. Mac Totty for the Bowens, who got such a great record over this. Will he stay? Well, oh, two time course winner. Um he was only fifteen to two for the beach, he didn't get round that that time. Um I doubt he'll stay. Uh, that that would be my issue with him, but I mean, he's again, he's another horse that really likes the track. When he won at the track, he gave some sight, didn't he? It was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, Superman yeah, going yeah, over yeah, the hurdles. He, he loves it, but I mean, it's, it's a long way further, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, chemical energy has been taught to. Uh, now, this is quite interesting, this, because we talked about Marla Mission earlier when he fell at the second last in the National Hunt. I thought chemical energy was the eye catcher in that race, because I think Jamie Codd had to get going a lot sooner than he wanted to get to Marla Mission and would have actually won the race if Marla Mission hadn't yeah, fallen. Yeah, he got his pocket picked. because, And then he got his pocket picked by, <laughs> late on by Patrick Mullins on Galliard de Maynil, who came on and finished third. Now, this has been the target all season long for this. He's a very, very good jumper. They're worried about the ground, but if it goes good to soft, he becomes he comes much more into it. 50 to 1, DJ, with William Hill. And Danny Gilligan, he can ride. Ah, uh, what a what a rider! Like he won the Martin Pipe on Better Days Ahead. He won the Galway Plate. Um, he is a class kid, and yeah, like like Tom said, uh, Chemical Energy. This has been a proper plot for the Nationals. So yeah, couldn't put anybody off. You want to have a few could each way at a huge price. Fifty to one. Then I wonder if he'll figure in the one, two, three falls, which we're getting to. A Limerick Lace comes up next. Absolutely huge plunge on this Cheltenham Festival winner won the Mayor's Chase at Doncaster before this. Ridden by Mark Walsh, whether you believe he picked it or not, that is the JP McManus's top rider, and he is on. JP McManus himself in the week, of course, went on to the camera and said, I had a bit on this at 25 to 1. Whether that caused the plunge or not, I don't know. That Jab was you that caused the plunge, I understand. Definitely have been having a little nibble at it. <laughs> <laughs> whether I saw it as a 9 to 1 <laughs> shot, I don't know. Uh, Tom, let's come to you on this then. Well, Limerick Lace. The one thing I'd say about Limerick Lace is that she ran from once over three miles and she ran very well in the Troy Town, but she had a seven pound claimer on and she's nine pound or eight, six pound higher, I think, in the, in the handicap. So she's 13 pounds higher than when getting beaten by Coco Beach in the Troy Town. Now she's come out and she's won some mares races and she was really good at Cheltenham. But it's a totally different game. She's got a, She's taking on a totally different level here, in my opinion, and she's got to prove her stamina. So. I think nine to one is very, very short. She will love the drying ground. The handicapper would have more in her back, of course, if he could reassess her, which has become a modern trend with this race. Uh, Posty Limerick Lace? I think she is too short with the stamina concerns. If she stays, like she's a massive player, but but I, I wouldn't be backing her at the price she is with We're that. Gonna go round the field on this, Kills. Uh, sister or two, I know the way you think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. And he stays forever, doesn't he? So, you know, if there's a chance. My brother, he's useless at tipping, though. <laughs> You're talking about me again. Uh, all, right. all right, DJ, Limerick Lace, some plunge. Could he yet go off favourite? I don't think so, no. Uh, I don't think he'd go off favourite. Uh, it's funny, Gavin Cromwell is, is, is not a trainer that, that, that you know, overrates his horses or overrates their chances. And just chatting to him in the last couple of days, he's pretty sweet on Limerick Lace. I think he thinks Limerick Lace is going to run a massive race. And obviously Mark Walsh does too. All right, Jamie, let's bring you in. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not out of the camp that she could go off over because in the 20 minutes leading up to the National, crazy things can happen. And I wouldn't be surprised with the plunge. It's dried up maybe a little bit. Nine to one with Hills. You're ducking this. Yeah, she has been very well backed, and I'd be in your camp in terms of it. It can be very, very unpredictable market in the last hour or so. So I don't think it's beyond the realms of possibility she goes off favour. I think we are. We actually, when we started betting on this, we didn't even have a list, and she's on. Un, she's under the any other horse to go off. Have. Uh, she's currently seven to two, and obviously you get the whole field with that. But it looks doubtful unless there's a big plunge on Manila Rundo that you've got anything else running for you in that market. I'd just be slightly worried. I didn't like the way she uh, 
crashed a tail late on at Cheltenham. I, don't, I just wonder when the stamina gauge is running empty, whether that will be accentuated somewhat. But, uh, yep, she's been very well backed. Yeah, that's a propeller, isn't it? What's he on about? Yeah, I, 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 I think she does swish her tail a bit, but I wouldn't be concerned about that. Like, when you know, she won at Donny, she nearly pu- pulled herself up. That's how much she had in hand. She was going to win the track that day, never mind half the track. Anyway, I, I like her a great deal, as Tom's alluded to. What about the gopher then, number 27, as we get towards the business end of this horse by horse guide? Perennial eye catcher, isn't he? Ground turning in his favour? Oh, well, he's got a big stamina doubt about him. He ran... A surprisingly good race in the Bet365 last year where he was fourth to Kitty's Light. And he looked like he was finishing sort of tepidly. He, he didn't like, he wasn't like a non-stayer, but he sort of wasn't like one you'd think, oh, he, he, he'll, he'll be a national horse. And the rest of his form suggests to me that he's not going to stay the trip. He's caught the eye in the last two Ultimas, hasn't he, including this year as well. Yeah, but he didn't stay It's a non-stayer, year, though, he it, caught the eye. So I mean, should like, he have been running in the top and basically? He, 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 uh, he's here. Yeah, I'd have, I'd have stuck him in the top and something All else. Right, which yeah, is a shorter yeah. one. Yeah. Of course, of course, I've jumped the gun slightly because his meeting of the waters is number 26 ahead of him. Two of them tied in form-wise, which brings me cleverly back into the link. And, uh, and anyone, I spoke to Danny Mullins about this guy yesterday. Of course, he was on him in the Paddy Power chase. I remember Johnny the Judge Simpson around about Christmas said to me after he'd finished the show, we've seen some smart money for uh, meeting the waters when he was in Paul Burns' colours, of course. He hosed up that day. Of course, he's come to grief since. Danny Mullins said to me, the key will be the first few fences. I have to switch him Relax, off. Relax, yeah. And then I will be getting excited about my chances. Anyone else excited? I think he's obviously a decent horse, isn't he? He's a decent handicapper. There's no doubt about that. Finished third in the Altima, didn't he? He's not... A novice. Is he still a novice? Uh, not sure about that. <laughs> Don't go yes. there. Yes, he is. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah Do I, they win? <laughs> I'd, I'd certainly fear if I backed something else. I'd, it'd be one of the ones I'd fear for sure. It's not well, if you're on Canty but... Classico, which you were, of course, you're napping the yeah. Channel Festival. And Thank you very much. He, well, <laughs> any time, mate, any time. Uh, but, uh, you know, having backed him as well, the whole second circuit, I was like, there's only one horse that could beat him, it's yeah. me in the waters. He didn't, he didn't quite pull out the stops. Well, he didn't, he didn't finish full of running that day, I didn't think. You know, if you're worried about... Correct Rambler having a hard... He had a hard race, meeting of the waters too. He, he wasn't sprinting up the... <laughs> Sprinting up the run, no, that, was that, he? That was, you know, that was first day. It was proper heavy ground, wasn't yeah. it, as well? I, so yeah. It was as bad right. as the ground. I would, do would, think, though, he is off a mark where he can win the national. There's a bit but, of scope there. But he has to relax through the first mile. And if you don't relax in a jumps race, you can't win. So it's one of those, I wouldn't want to back him pre-race, but if he gets into a rhythm, switches off, he, he, he has the scope to win a race like this. All I right, think okay. in an old-fashioned national, I'd fancy him a lot. But I think when they get, I think they just make it such a big test of stamina. They go so much faster yeah. right. that he might just be caught out. All right, media of the waters. All right, let's keep going down then. Roy Marge, let's come to you on this, DJ. Quick word on him. Where does he finish? In what bracket? Ah, sure, look, he's a lovely horse. Uh, I, I, I'd be surprised if he got into the first 10. So I know Keels is saying I'm putting them all between third and seventh. I'm not. I think this is somewhere between 12th and 20th. 12 and 20th for Roy Marge then. All right then, okie dokie, what have we got going on then? Let's have a look. Glenn Gooley, uh, let's go to this. I don't know how this has ended up in the last race. 100, 100 to 1, Willie Mullins, line through? Uh, not for me. It was in beaten by, ain't that a shame? Yeah, it was second in ran away from it, but then, but then it run he's... terribly since. Well, he That's ran the at the Cheltenham Festival. I was, a straight, I was surprised he ran. He would drop back to the plate, didn't he? Mm. I was surprised at that because he looked an out-and-out stare at the Thiesties, but he doesn't look good enough to me. Let's go to Galia De Lito then. DJ, you've already shown your hand on this and uh, you're worried about the drying ground. Just give us a succinct case. Ah, yeah, of course. Uh, look, I, I fancied her for quite a long time for this race. I, I, I thought it was going to be pretty testing and that was my kind of number one reason for fancying her. Uh, I just loved her run in the classic chase. I thought she really enjoyed, enjoyed it there. She attacked her fences. Uh, she's rated 146. It's obviously been the plan for quite some time. Dan has openly said that on the record. Is there a better target trainer in Britain than Dan Skelton? There's definitely not. And uh, I just think she's the type you're guessing, obviously, whether they're going to take to it or not. It, it's one of these where passing the winning post with a circuit to run, if she's in the van and enjoying it, I think she's a massive player. It's, it's keeping in touch early doors. I hope she's enough pace to hold her position in the early stages of the race. If she's bang there, traveling well and jumping sweetly, going out onto the final circuit, I think she could win the national. I thought she might have been a gamble in this race. She's currently at 28 to 1. I think she's better going left handed. Oh, I think that I like her. I think she's got a chance. That five Warwick to two. form is huge, isn't and she it? Was, she's amazingly started five to two to win a quarto star, Grade One. She was not far behind Iron Maximus in the Brown Advisory last year. She ran very well behind Jerry Colomb yeah. in the Grade One. She's a classy mare. 
if you throw out the last run at Exeter, she's got a better chance than her price. Dan's fairly sweet on her chance, isn't he, I think? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Uh, that's Carly Delito. Big chance for her. Panda Boy, who's been smashed in the market as well. Martin Brassel. Uh, over I guess, DJ, the, the, the two things, I spoke to your pal Johnny Dineen about this. He said, I'm worried about it staying. And where does the scope in the handicap mark come? But yet we're talking about a 10, 12 to 1 shot. Yeah, trained by the, the ultimate master, I think, of these type of handicaps, Martin Brazil, and, and even Craig Ones when you see what Fast or Slow has done. Um, look, he's a terrific trainer who's won the race before, who has, you know, carefully planned the perfect route, I think, to the Grand National Panda Boy. Got him in number 31, rated 146. He's one of those where he's not in my top four, but if he finished in the top four, I'd be saying, God, how did the hell did I not have him in the top four? So, yeah, people probably, other people on the panel can make a better case for Panda Boy can, than I can. But he, he must have a chance. It's very hard to write him off. He's in my top four. I'm fifth, in the R, now. fifth in the Irish National last year. £11 bet off with me in the waters, I think, for yeah. four and a half lengths. Oh, nice. And a massive eye catcher. Over hurdles. Uh, over hurdles. <laughs> uh, Which is number six Valverde yeah. route, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all, it's all there. For it's sure. all, he's very, very yeah. short. I remember about two months ago, we were looking at this. And yeah, he was I just missed the price, which is why he, uh, I, yeah. it wasn't... He's, 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 the, he's the archetypal yeah. sort of horse that you would have as a national. We're down the bottom of the weights. 10, 15 years ago, you'd been yeah, all over the, him, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. A train that's pretty able at this sort of thing. He just did a little bit able, isn't he? All right, what's next on the list? We've got to whittle through these. Uh, El Cat de Rea, very promising horse in his day. A few people have said, oh, I think this has got a bit of a chance, but I'm lying through this one. I've got to be... A, Ah, look, he's, he, he, on, on his old form when he was beat conflated easily, he's got he's the best handicapped horse in the race, but we haven't seen it. Stopped very quickly at Cheltenham last time. We haven't he? seen it since. Oh, I thought he stopped, stopped when he was quickly. second as well the time yeah. before that. DJ Elkat de Rea. Oh, I, I couldn't have him on my mind. Absolutely couldn't have him on my mind. I thought he was loving the first circuit in the ultimate, and then he stopped to nothing. Uh, no, uh, two people tipped him up to me yesterday, and I was like, God... What he is looking at, lads. I, I can't have him on my mind. My, my. I think it's the back class, because I've been getting those nods as well, DJ. Uh, and finally, 34 on the list. We do have entry previews coming up, which we're going to be bombing through for you after this. It's Kitty's Light. Thank goodness he's in the race. Massive story kills, but forget that. Let's look at his chance on paper. Massive. Simple as that. Uh, especially with the ground drying out. Um, if, it, if, if it dries out anymore, it's four o'clock, the race. Um, then, yeah, I mean, you know, not the best of jumpers, sticky jumper, but I mean, he hits a fence and carries on, doesn't care. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So that he will. Data thing's really fun. I'm not yeah. a great art racing, but he's one of the quickest over a fence, of, even though he doesn't look like to yeah. jump. He gets his feet out and goes off really quickly. He's the yeah, free yeah, kitty. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't bother him. Time in the air, does does it? No time. Oh, hit some, is, yeah. but it doesn't bother him in the slightest. And he stays forever. Yeah. Uh, and he's been prepared for it. After and he the 3.65 his... last year, he was my pick for this right from like a lot of people yeah. out there. He's, he's a springtime freak. My worry about him, I have kept him out of my top four, despite the fact I advised him as an Andy Post bet on this show, uh, like January time. The handicap mark is something of an issue to me. And having spoken to Christian since, if you look back at him, and I know that a lot of people could say, I'm not sure about whether he was really, that's his time of year. If you look back at him in the very top handicaps, he does get lost a little bit. I remember in the Badger Beers when he was a very young horse, that happened. It he happened didn't get lost in the Ida Chase well. or the Scottish National. No, of course he didn't. But they, are much, year, did he? they are much lesser races than those sort of company. I know he's Bond home. They're but not much lesser races than the Badger better Beer. Races. Maybe not no. the Badger Beer. No, <laughs> that's fair enough. I just it, There's something about him that I think... What you're saying is he might lack a bit of class. I think edge. he's got a bit of vanilla about him. I think he's going to get something. I think he'll lose himself at some point. Uh, you've, uh, you can do it in your top four, all right? Because I know you're a big mm -hmm. fan. He's in, though. He's definitely in my top four. Surely, I didn't want to get him out of my top four, but this is the national. We had to do it. And I, 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 Everyone who ever watches anything I do knows I, I, I'm a there haven't been many fan. horses finish stronger in the marathon handicaps that he won last year than him. Should have won the bet three six five twice, basically. You know yeah. all that sort of stuff. It's not a horse that the public shouldn't want to win more than. Of Kitty course, Rye. it would be brilliant for the game if yeah. he won it. Yeah, and I honestly, this will be the moment of the last ten years if he wins this. For, but and look, what do you reckon about Kitty's? Then he's got in. He's down the bottom. Can he pull it out? All right. Okay. That is your thirty-two runners that we've now got in the Grand National. All right, let's go for the top four, shall we? And Paul Keady... They better give... come up on the thing. They are, are coming up. Remember oh, they are coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember just what you've done for? Which one? Where they... Okay, all right. No, 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 there's your first. Oh, yeah, I'm first, am I? I thought you wouldn't yeah. want to go to DJ. He's got to get to the track, Taps. Uh, right, yeah, I've put I am Maximus in there because I've backed him at 50s and I'm just going to scream him home and I yeah. don't care what happens to the rest if he's there. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Delta work was just, I thought, overpriced. 
uh, based on what he's done before. Kitty's Light obviously has a great chance, as does Panda Boy. Not the most original top four there, but I think it's that, that sort of race these days. Well, I, I agree, and you, you're getting seven to one about a horse you, you clearly really fancy, whereas you, yesterday, Bill Baxter was like four to one to win yeah. that. You know, you get it. With no form, yeah. With no form. No this form, has yeah. got the, one of the best pieces of form, and it's still a seven to one shot. Yeah. OK. All right, all right Max, there was a lot of love for that. DJ, let's come to you, because I've got people screaming at me on my phone that you've got to get to the track. Tom Kerr's not been on yet, but he might be if we keep you any longer. Uh, yeah, it's funny. Uh, of Keels' top four, none are in my top four, and hey. he says they're all so uh, good, good news for you, obviously, Kiels, that none of my top four and your top four. Uh, my, my, my number one is Galli de la Toe. Uh, they could, they're, they're starting to flip-flop in my mind at the moment between Valor Mission and Galli de la Toe with the way the ground is drying out and, and the kind of the reasonable heat of the temperatures at the moment. But Galli de la Toe, after that classic chase, I thought was my grand national winner. Valor Mission just loved it in the old Hennessy, just pinged everything and, and seemed to really enjoy himself. I think he's a big player. Meeting of the Waters, I could see running in grade ones next season. I think Meeting of the Waters is the potential improver in the race. Uh, I think he's got a big chance. And Vanillier, I know you don't like him, but I think he is the type that will be staying on from two out. And uh, if he does get a smooth run through and enjoys it, I think he can finish in the top four. So Galli de la Toe, Maller Mission, Meeting of the Waters and Vanillier. I, I was oh. really looking forward to that top four because we've had your 32 to, 30, to, uh, to 28. We've had your 10 to 18 and now we've got your top four. Before we yeah. go, DJ, you're going to be at the track side afternoon we'll be looking forward to what you're putting down on the keyboard going out in the paper on the website of course but what is your nap of the day this will be boosted at the end of the show let's go oh this is uh this is a uh one that most people watching uh, the morning post will disagree with but uh i'm really keen on chantry house in the open three mile handicap hurdle i thought he ran really well far better than his finishing position position suggests in the pretense final at, 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 at cheltenham i know he's not the force he once was but he's plummeted then the, the handicap ratings and i think he's the type of horse that could love this around Aintree. He's got blinkers on. Hopefully, James Bobone will get the best out of him. I think the boost from the 20 to 1, I think that's a little bit of value. Brilliant, DJ. Brilliant. Great to have you on. Enjoy it this afternoon at the track. We shall let Dave Jennings go now. All right, good man. Absolutely. All right, stick with us because we've got big Aintree previews coming up. We're going to give you the rest of the one, two, three, fours before that, though. OK, Kills has done it. DJ's done it. Charlie Post, you're coming up next. What's number one? Panda Boy is uh, my... Number one selection. I, I love the profile. I think he's he's well handicapped compared to a lot of the main protagonists. And you know, with the trainer Martin Brazil, brilliant target trainer. Corret Rambler, last year's winner, great prep in the Gold Cup. Can't see him not running a huge race. Marla Mission again, love the run in the Old Hennessy. You know, think stamina in abundance. Uh, I'd have nearly had him higher, just slightly where the the form of the McConnell Yard and adamantly chosen as an improver up in trip looked great over three and a quarter miles. And if he stays this extra mile, I think he's going to run a big race. Adamantly chosen in there for Charlie. Then Tom, was he in yours? Let's have a look. I can't remember to be honest, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've played it. You've played a straight bat here, Tom. I quite like that. Well, I I cannot see Corrat Rambler not running a big race. I'm I I was on anti post. I was on Vanillier and Kitty's Light. I might switch them round now with the ground coming more in Kitty's light favour. I think she's going to run a massive race. And listen, I, 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 you can make cases for all those ones at big prices, but I really thought class will come to the fore. So I'm hoping Corrat Rambler wins it. Wow, no wacky ones, Tom. I thought there might be a big price in there. Jamie McBride, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I've gone with Panda Boy's my number one, but I might actually end up with no money on him because I, I backed him early in the week in some each way doubles with golfers currently hacking their way around uh, Augusta. <laughs> so, and, and the juice has gone out of the price as well, so I'm, I, I'm reluctant to play him at the price he is now. But uh, the one, uh, uh, the two I have backed the Delta Work and Galvin. I'm especially looking forward to Galvin. I think you're getting some extra juice in the price just because of preconceptions about the ground, which I, I don't actually believe anyway. He, when he won the Lexus uh, back at Leopardstown, the Christmas race, time form called that soft. So he's a grade one winner at soft. He ran a perfectly eye-catching race last time on heavy. So he's the one I'm most excited about, Galvin. Well, we're seeing a lot of horses in the same list, aren't we? Let's get mine up then to conclude the National Horse by Horse Guide. Limit race I've got on top. You've heard why. I am Maximus. Cannot see him out the top four. I, I'm undenied with top one about that one. Garlia De Lito, not that worried as DJ is about the giant ground. I think it's going to be soft enough underfoot for her. And Panda Boy. So you can do an aggregate, can't you, on the one, two, three balls. There's a lot of similar horses in there. Good luck, everyone, 
on the Nationals. It's now time to have a look at the feature races. We're going to whittle through these for you. We begin with the 120. We've heard that DJ has napped in it. Well, the two gentlemen sitting to my left on the sofa are also keen on this race. I said at the top of the show, Posty, West Balboa, give us quickly why. Yeah, West Balboa, brilliant target trainer, eye-catching run at Kempton the last day. Katira that finished just in front of her, obviously took the handicap hurdle out yesterday. Again, West Balboa, like Katira the day at Kempton, were not the choice of Harry Skelton. Boom, Bourne was. Harry Skelton's back on board. Good course form. Just can't see her not running a massive race. And is that eye-catching underlined, is it? Is that eye-catching underlined last time at Kempton? Yeah. So you're suggesting that that might not have been the day? I'll leave that to people to make their own minds up. Uh, you think there's a big one in this? I think there's a big price in it. Now, I put West Balboa up in the weekend uh, at eight. Didn't think it should be anywhere near that price. I also didn't think it should be anywhere near five to two. So uh, uh, I have to jump off when they get that shorter. Jaffra uh, beat Quintara two starts ago. Quintara was £10 high. I ran a blinder in the, uh, in the three mile yesterday. Um, fourth to cup at Divil last time, £12 better off. Or 11, 11 or £12 better off. Uh, and was third in this race three years ago off a stone a higher mark just thought it was just a massive price each way with the extra places all right mine's been smashed in this uh, that's uh, black bamboo uh, we're going right down the list now to see where kills is is black bamboo really caught my eye last time at Cheltenham. i didn't think he'd be a seven to one shot but i think he's going to hit the line hard cuthbert did a lot of fans of are you tom cuthbert dylan crab no not for me i think i think uh he might have well listen he ran very well in the per temps he was gamble that day wasn't he into yeah. favorite for the per temps uh Listen, he's plenty. I, I thought West Balboa was obvious. Five to two is uh, plenty short. I thought Johnny Who was another one that might run well, and I like you. I thought Black Bamboo was a big guy catcher in the Coral Cup. You're getting m loads of places on this race as well, aren't we, Jamie? And uh, so we've heard from the panel. What's hot? Obviously, West, Bam West Balboa, you've gone very short on. Yes, like I say, six places, so it's a strong offer at the start of the day, but it is just one way traffic. West Balboa is really well backed. Uh, like the Guys made the case for it, and the recently biased, like Charlie mentioned, of Katira yesterday, all adds up to uh, her being a horrendous start of the day for William Hill. So you've got four places there. I reckon you could back all of the horses that we've given you and still potentially make a profit there in that first race. So there's a little bit of guidance there. Let's move on then, shall we, to the second race of the day that we're going to be covering. Let's get the market up, and then I will remember which one it is, because we've got, of course, a lot of classy races on the card. Here we go, one, two, three, four, as it magically appears. And it is, of course, ah, yes. No uh, Caldwell Potter in this, of course. It's the Grade 1 Novice Hurdle. Brilliant Grade 1s that we've seen. A lot of people are sometimes a bit disparaging about Aintree, but I think this is definitely a benefactor of the fact that people don't want to run their horses before Cheltenham. And here we've got Brighter Days Ahead talking about a Cheltenham festival. Uh, the banker for many, Jamie McBride, going into that. Didn't put it out the fire. Punters are forgiving kind. They are, yeah. She's a really solid favourite. It's a shame Colwell Potter's out because we were, we were wanting to be against him. But um, I think at the current price, he'd, I, we'd have to be against Brighter Days Ahead. Uh, she might have been a bit too keen at Cheltenham and it was a slowly run race, didn't suit, etc., etc. But you, you don't want to be making too many excuses for horses at 11 to 10. So uh, we'd be uh, cheering on Jimmy Desert to beat her. Yeah, I think kills your. You'll be looking at that similarly, won't you? You've got mares form well, against. I would simply Bally rather. Burn I would rather back a horse at three to one that finished second to a one sixty horse in Ballyburn than a horse at eleven to ten that finished second to a one forty horse in Golden Ace. It's that simple, isn't it? I know there's winning margins are, are different, but it just doesn't make any sense that market. Yeah, uh, Jamie, Il Antique's very short now. Has he been well back? Because I, 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 I thought Jimmy Desoy would be the the clear Mullins choices. Is there money around for Il Antique? He's been Antique. nibbled. He's been nibbled at. Um, he was. He's been bigger than that, uh, even when you uh, account for the rule of four. But uh, it's definitely brighter days ahead. The one that's been uh, the serious money for. Uh, post a quick word on this. Yeah, I'm Il Atlantique for me. Uh, I thought yeah, the, the mare was way too short, and I didn't think there was too much between Jimmy De Sol and Il Atlantique on that Cheltenham run. Granted, Paul Townend's plump for the Jimmy to sell but again I'm surprised to see Atlantique that short he was a bit bigger when I, when, I, when I liked him earlier on if I could have a lay of the day I think brighter days ahead would be it I think this is bonkers this market well I don't know she's pretty it's, good it's all I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't lay her surely it's all hype I, 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 I wouldn't well, I, no I don't buy into that I just think she's too short in this but I, I still wouldn't be wanting to like I, I wouldn't want to Jay be mad against came her. out but she got she got you know probably want to pull Talents ones that you want back from the Cheltenham Festival, Jade Grigi, but that wasn't much of a race that she won last time at Fairy House, and 
Oh, I think that Jimmy Desoy, if he goes anywhere near that Cheltenham form, he, he really ought to be putting pressure on this. All right, that is the 155. We've got a William Hill sponsored race coming up next for you. Going down. Tom, did you give a tip in that? Uh, yeah, I definitely did give a tip. I can't remember what it was though. <laughs> <laughs> the producers are now scrambling around to find out what it was. I'm now talking of Tom's tips. And as you'd have seen in the paper, well, I think we should let Tom go with Yeah, this. I like the King of Rye hope in this. It's just, it's just a head. It's just, it, I wasn't expecting him to be four to one, to be fair, because on form he should be a bit bigger than that. But I thought it was just a clearly obvious Dan Skelton special for me. Uh, he, I think he's had five or six runners in this race, and I don't think any of them have finished out the frame. Yeah. I think he won it last year with a very similar horse, and I thought he was coming to win the Grade 2 Reynolds Town last time before smashing into the last. So just looked to me like he was the one with the upside, novice in a handicap chase. Mm. That's what I like. He was Obvious, obviously short enough price. Now, there's a few others at bigger price floating around, and I think Keels has got an interesting one that I would give a shout to he was as a well. massive eye-catcher at, 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 at Ascot last time, and I thought that, that uh, he almost, I don't know, sort of like didn't finish as close at the end as I thought yeah, he was going He missed the last, to. but big time. Big was time. that what it was, the yeah, last year? Big okay, time. all right. So, look, he, he's a fascinating old skills. Give us one at a larger price. Uh, yeah, larger price, I like cruise control. Just think he's done nothing but improve all season. Started off two and a half miles, went straight up from two and a half to four mile, one and a half in the Ida. Didn't quite stay finished fifth, uh, but hit a line hard enough at Newcastle last time, won very easily. Tom Lacey won this with Thomas Patrick in 2018. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, I remember um, that. Um, I mentioned the old right. forward plan as well, haven't we? What a great horse he's been uh -huh. this year. Should have won the Great Yorkshire. He won the, uh, was it, I can't remember where he won, but then he won at, he at Kempton afterwards. He should have won three big handicap chases and he's still only about six pounds higher or something. So I, I could see him running well. He's a strong finisher. The handicapper can't quite get hold of him because he only ever yeah. wins by a little. Yeah, Anthony Honeyball's horse. Uh, Crebley is in this. Again, I talk about bankers at the festival. A lot of people were bankering this going in. I could see the step up in trip posty for this. Yeah, I could definitely see it. Uh, probably needs to find a bit more fluency with his jumping, you know, and I'm, not, I'm, I'm never convinced by moving from Cheltenham to Aintree is any easier. I'd argue that the, the fence on the Marmay track at Aintree uh, take every bit as much We could do our more. own show yeah. about that, couldn't mm -hmm. we? It's, yeah. it's such a, you know, a stark transition. Uh, what do you like in it? I'm king of Rye Hope as well, you know, as in um, the king. Dan, when I spoke to him pre Aintree, was on about this horse, they might have even flipped him into the grade one. So I think they definitely feel there's upside to the mark. Ooh, king of Rye Hope. Right, uh, Kills, did you give us one? I yes, cruise control. control. Cruise okay. control, sorry, yeah, okay. All right, uh, I was looking down at one. What about Twig, just before we move on? Yeah. He was second in the art, wasn't he? Yeah, ran, ran a great race. Ran a cracker, yeah. <laughs> what you he, ran a, he, he ran a blind, didn't he? But that was a very hard race. We're talking about uh, Mr. Fine. Incredible ever in a hard race. Catalas, Chianti Classico. Mm. This is he Austin. Great, did he, Chianti Classico? No, no. I just, well, I mean, again, yeah, yeah. It looked like it was a hard ultimate, didn't it? Uh, this is a race that can produce future national horses potentially. So good luck wherever you're going. This lot of love here for King Araiho. What about Jamie McBride? Are you seeing it as well? Yeah, uh, we're fans of King and Rye Hope as well. We've kept him on side since we started betting on the race on Monday. Yep, he look, like the guys said, he just looks another Dan Skelton uh, plot job. All right, OK, Jamie likes that as well. That is a William Mill handicap chase then at 2.30. Let's move on to our final preview race. The naps are coming up and they are boosted, so I assume they're going live very shortly. Indeed, JJ's already given us Chantry House in the first. But here we are. It's the Liverpool Hurdle. I'm going to stick with you, Jamie, on this because Florian Porter looks like he's taking a bit of a drift out to me. Yeah, him and Saeed Abel have been uh, shorter than they are currently uh, this week. They are a bit lukewarm. Outside of the National and probably West Balboa, Hidden Valley Lake looks as though he's been the best back of the day. Uh, we were 10 to 1 Thursday, and that's pretty much halved in price. So that's one we'll be keen to get beat. All right. OK, kills. Well, the one thing I'll say about this right, is if you jumbled up those horses there and Hidden Valley Lake was the outside of the lot, I wouldn't be surprised. I just can't have him at all. I don't get it. I think he's a slow horse, and the ground drying out isn't going to suit either. Got the form either, is it? Wasn't a great race last time, no, was I it? I just don't. I don't get that at all. I don't get it at all. Yeah. Flo uh, uh, Florian Port has been fab last two years. Sidey Burley has won the last two years. Yeah. Um, so you can see them getting closer. But I mean, I, you know, he's obviously got a course form. So strong leader, and at two miles, he's beaten what is now a very good novice chaser very easily. And. He was second in the grade one over two mile last year and all he did was stay when running on to be third to Noble Yates in the Cleve. This is, the race has been laid out for, I think he's got a massive chance. He's yeah, a horse you know a bit about, isn't he? Strong leader, yeah. I mean, um, I can see it. I, I just feel like he has a tendency at times to race sulkily, which puts me off slightly. For, and for all that I can see that, I, I'm with Sider Burley, you know, won it the last two years. I, I thought he ran all right at Cheltenham. Supposedly not been straightforward for him, but yeah, I, I thought at six to one, he was, he was a bit of, 
he was actually a decent price in this. Crambo would be a bit of an egg on the face also, wouldn't he? He was really short in the stairs, just didn't turn up. Crambo, grade one winner. Hewitt, grade one winner. Monkfish, grade one winner. We haven't even mentioned them. You yeah. know, it's a really, really strong race. You can make a case for all of them. I like Hills Think Strong Leader's going to run well because when he ran in that grade one last year, he actually finished in front of Lucia, mm. who was third in the... She, he's, he's pretty classy. If you get, if you, it, and I'm, I'm hoping, I, I get what Charlie says about him being a bit sulky, but the twice he's run at Aintree, he's done nothing. Loved it. Yeah, and and you know what, Aintree. this track is perfect yeah, because you can it. get a little bit behind and the straight over hurdles goes on forever. It's a beautiful so looking If, if he's within it? touching distance, jumping the last, with a furlong and a half of to gallop on the flat, he, you could see him. You could see him taking this. All up. right, around the house as we go. Kills tip in this. Strong leader. Strong leader. Side of Burley. Side of Burley, who just caught the eye of many in the stage. What about you, Dave? Well, I do like quite like Hidden Valley Lake, but this is a project. I should say that I've always been with him. I backed him in the Albert Bartlett, and I think he's not shown his best yet. He's. I didn't think I'd be seeing him in a five to one in this company, though. The only thing you'd say is the owners have Tiupu and Irish Point, and Hidden Valley Lake turns up. That which, did catch my attention as sort well. Of, sort of. Maybe why the money's there. You wouldn't mind I running a, a, a to Hooper on this ground, would you? Uh, in which, and the, but the other one, my eyes constantly drawn to is Hewick, who every time I go against him seems to run a massive race. And Shark Cannon's finally got the ground for him. And of course, we know, uh, you know, in America he can jump hurdles very well. In fact, should he be in the national? Uh, all right, okay, that is the previewing done, uh, and we are pretty much done and dusted preview-wise. Stick around for the naps. Who wants some free bets? Great fun the last hour and 20 or so. I think after a massive preview of the National, we've done pretty well to get here. Let's get to the naps then. This is the business end for a lot of you. If you're watching on YouTube and you've just got here, go back. There's loads of pearls of wisdom for you. Who is at the top? Well, I'm going to go first. Uh, Tripoli Flyer in the bumper. Yeah, the bumper, believe it or not. And uh, this guy was a Lingfield Polytrack winner. It could well be Paddy O'Brien. Paddy O'Brien? Paddy O'Brennan's. <laughs> Paddy, Paddy O'Brennan. <laughs> Fergal Brennan's <laughs> last ride on the track. Uh, if this goes and wins, there's a lot of talk about that. And I know the Henderson horse that he beat last time at Polytrack. They're very valuable, those bumpers at Lingfield. Nicky told me exactly that himself. And I know they think the world of that. This one, well, and I think it will go well in the bumper. Uh, all right, uh, who's next? Oh, Jeff Hoa. Yeah, I just think it's a massive price each way. Each Tell way. You what, they'll carry you out if that wins. Kills. These have been boosted yeah, kills as well. I'm going to get Jamie to do this when he gives us his nap as well. King of Rye Hope. Yeah, I think he's got a good chance. And, b and Boy Hope by what? Yeah, yeah that's what, good news. What, what one of Dan's mates just told you. Uh, Founder 50. Yeah, uh, I mean, I really like West Balboa, but yeah, founder 50, just thought in this novice, this grade one novice chase, there's, he just by far the best, I think. Oh, good on you for not napping in the same race. We don't like that, really. We're trying to give you a nap across the card, basically. There is a second page. DJ's already given you Chantry House. And these are boosted, of course, Jamie McBride. But give us your nap before telling us what the sexy boosts are. My nap is Hewick. Like I said, I think the front end of the market in that race is hopefully beatable. Um, we are going nine to one from 15 to two Hewick. And I'll just quickly run down the rest. Uh, two to one from 13 to eight, founder 50. Nine to two from four, King of Rye Hope. Eight from seven, Tripoli Flyer. 20 from 12, Chantry House. And 40 from 28, J. Froix. All right, some whopping prices there. Uh, all right, that's it. That's come to the business end. Thank you for watching. This has been the Morning Post. We'll be back next week, of course. We'll be switching attention to the flat, but this is Grand National Day. Very special, isn't it? Let us know where you're watching as well in the chat. like to read them afterwards. Paul Keeley, thank you very much. No problem. Good luck with your top four. I think you've got the right chance. Uh, mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Not sure. Tom, great to have you back. <laughs> Thanks, David. I noticed right. you skirted over my top four. <laughs> Yours are <laughs> much shorter than I think a lot of people would have been expecting. All right. Good look at everyone that's playing on this race. It's a special Saturday. This has been the Morning Post. Enjoy the sport.